And besides uh, generating or create a table, we can also actually delete a, a table in our database system. It's equivalent to remove a relation from our uh, design. So we can do so by typing in a job table with a table name and something like this. We can still take the products table as an example. So we know if we run a code like this, the system will generate a blank table, and as you can hear. And later on, we can insert some data into it, the table itself is fine. And however, later on, you find that you need to make some changes to the relation. You think this table is not necessary, and you plan to delete it from, the, from, your, from your system. You can do so by typing You do so by typing job table product with same comma for it. You can do so by typing this code job table product and the system runs this code. What the system do we do actually is to delete the whole table from the system. Once this code is run and it finishes running, and this table will be deleted and we no longer exist anymore. Here I mean both the table schema as well as all the data inside this table, they will all be denoted. The table will no longer exist. So if you run this code, please be very careful if you plan to drop some tables. So once the table is dropped, both the schema together with the data, they will all be denoted and can never be recovered. So be very careful if you plan to run code and drop table like this. So you see, when we are creating a table or a relation, we have to declare the types of attributes inside this relation with some data types. The data types we can use in our database systems is very similar to our programming language like C++ or Java, but they also have some differences. So in this page, we're going to show some very common data types we can use in declaring the relations and the tables. So we see that the principal element of the attributes actually is a pair consisting of attributes then with a type. And the common types we can use to declaring the attributes actually include the integer, as we show here. We can write down either as an int or integer. Depending on the system we are, we are using, they can be the same actually. And for the real numbers, we can either write down them as a real or float in our system. We also mentioned that we have two different ways to declare the strings, right? We can either write down them as a char with n, n is a number. This denotes a fixed length string with n characters. So if you see some of the string are fixed length, we have some cases like VRN number or the passport numbers or the search screen number. The length of the strings is a fixed length, right? If so, then we have to declare them as a string of a char n, right? A fixed length string state. And sometimes the string we have in our database system can be changing, right? For different cases. Now for the names of a person, the name can be different for different person, right? If so, then we can declare the name of a person as a VR char n, n is also a number. So it denotes a variable length string with up to n characters inside a string. So this n denotes a maximum length of this VR char string. So you can differentiate this two, right? This char denotes a fixed length string with n characters. This VR char n denotes a variable length string with up to n chars. So they are different. And let's come back to the example we showed before, right? We show an example on this page. We say that for products, we can declare the name of the products as a char. It means that for all the products in our tables, they should have the same names, which is 20 chars as a name. However, in the real world program, it is not the case, right? Because the name of the products can be very different. And then we probably have two changes, one to VAR char in state, right? VAR char 20, it means the next length of the string is 20. If it is shorter, that's fine, it's okay. And we also have to update this name here, it should be VAR char, right? 
For category or category as one as the VR chart is fine. Manufacturer is also the VR chart is also fine, right? So for some cases we have to use a chart, and some cases we have to use the VAR chart. And the common way we use the chart is for some ID numbers like the driver's license number, right? So just a great number, and where the passport number. Even your FSU ID and something like this. So we have to use a char for us. The main reason is because for this kind of numbers, they have a fixed Nash. We cannot declare them as VAR char because they are fixed Nash. We have to declare them as a char. In this way, the system can help us to check if these input numbers they are legal or illegal in terms of their names. So we know that like the search screen number, this names is 9, right? If we type in some numbers whose names is 8 or 11 or 10, then we can say that it is illegal. In the system, we reject this kind of data inputs. Therefore, for some cases, we have to use the char n to help us to check some data inputs. It should be of a fixed names. And sometimes we have to use the VAR char. It is more flexible. Like the names or some other cases, we have to use the VR chart shown here. So all these types we show here has their specific functions in the real world in modeling the data we have. In this page, we show another example for creating a table, like for the sales. Before, in the previous section, we have mentioned the beers as well as the bars and the manufacturers, right? And between the beers and the bars, we know that. Some bar can sell some can sell some beers, and we will create a table for the sales relationship between bars and the beers. So as you here, we can do so by create table sales. Sales is a table name or a relation name, right? We have a parentheses inside it. We have uh, three different attributes. The first one is the bar. It denotes a bar ID or bar name. It is char twenty. I know in the real world, the bar name can be real or child, right? However, here we assume that all the bar names they are of a fixed name. It's a name is 20. And then may, they may some sell some beers. The beer name can be the VR child 20. The max name will be 20, right? And it sells the beer at a certain price. The price is the real number, as you here. Then we have the parentheses and the same comma to close this uh, declaration for the table. So in this way, we will create a table in our database system for sales, indicating the sales relationship between bars and beers. Besides the very simple and basic data types, we can also have some more complicated data types we can use in declaring the tables or the relations we can use in SQL. So in this page, we want to show two other data types we can use. The first one is called date, the second one is called time. So the date and the time, they are both types in SQL. Now before, in our in the ER model section, we have mentioned that the people can buy some product from a store on a specific date, right? And we can declare this date attribute as a type and a date as you in here. So in SQL, for the date, for the date type, they have a specific uh, template or format. So all the dates will be represented as a string, something like this. We have a year, it's a full charge, and followed by months as well as day. So all the dates will be represented in a similar way, year, months, and a day. So here we have an example, right? the date 2002, the September, the 30th. It denotes the year 2002, the month is September, the day is 30th of the month. So you need to remember this template, this format of the date. You can write down them, then you can write them in the correct way in SQL. So for example, we may have some queries to ask you to get all the data for the purchase action on a specific date. If so, you need to have declare the date on a specific date as you hear. Besides that, we can also declare the specific time on the day and the time type as you hear. 
The time also has a, a specific form or template. It should be returned like this. We have an hour, and we have a minute, and followed by a second. So all the time will be returned in a similar way, like a string, right? Hour, minute, and seconds. So, and sometimes, because a second cannot be precise to declare the time we have, and sometimes we also allow the string to have a pointer, the same pointer, and followed by a fraction of a second following that. I mean, we have an example shown here. For example, when we declare time, it's a 15, 30, 02, 0.5. It denotes a 2 and a 0.5 second after a 3 and a half in the p.m. So this a 15 denotes a 3 p.m., right? This 30 denotes 30 a minute. It's a 02 denotes 2 second, right? It's 0.5 denotes a half a second. So it denotes two and a half seconds after the three thirty in the PM, right? So you also need to remember the, the format for the time as well, and you may also need to use it for writing the SQL code later.